Happy Sunday to you all. I hope you're having a really wonderful day so far. I just got home recently from church. You know, I had to have a little breakfast because I forgot to eat before church and I was, my stomach was growling like crazy while I was there and I was hoping it was going to be quiet so I could just not concentrate on that and enjoy the service. And eventually it did subside a little bit, but by the time I got home, I was really hungry. So I had a big old bowl of, of that, um, frosted shredded wheat cereal and I'm not usually a huge cereal person but today is just what sounded delicious and now I'm full and I could probably skip lunch and power right through some videos today. So um, if you guys haven't noticed I am wearing the jewelry I made from the Curia bead box. Um, I wore this to church today and it was the first thing my mom noticed about me and she loved it and I got several compliments um, about my jewelry today. So that, I guess it just goes to show you the ones that we struggle with the most and um, seem like maybe that we didn't put as much effort into it. You know what I mean? Like planning it out and buying stuff for it or digging through your stash to find the exact everything you need from start to finish, um, it can turn out to be beautiful. So um, with that being said, today we are going to unwrap something fantastic that Beth Sullivan had sent me and we're going to make something from what she sent me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around and if you don't know, Beth Sullivan is the owner of um, Georgia, I just lost it, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Beth. Please don't, please don't be upset. I, <laughs> Georgia Peach Polymer is what it's called. It came to me all of a sudden. Um, so we're going to unwrap some goodies today. And um, I'm really excited to show you guys the things that she has been working on and, um, and where to find her also. So if you're interested in any pieces that she has made um, or that she is about to make, I think that um, she had her surgery and so she's doing much better now and she's probably gonna be right back to it. Plus she's got another, um, there's another Polymer Clay Facebook page that I will find the link to and you need to go through like an invitation process kind of thing like you, you know, ask to join and answer some questions and stuff. But if you're interested, there's a lot of really talented people on there sharing all their work and um, I think a lot of the pieces you're, you're going to be able to buy and everything. So there's some beautiful stuff, some talented people, and I will share all that with you too. So I'll be right back and we will go through the mail and we will also make something really cute from what Beth has been so gracious to share with me. Okay, so of course I did have to open the envelope on Friday when I got it. Um, and I took a quick peek while I was wolfing down some dinner before I got on the live um getting ready for the live with Sam and friends. So I will go ahead and get this opened up all the way and I'm just gonna take out some bags and we're gonna take a peek at what she has sent. And so far I am seeing really cute things. Now these are something that she made, these cute little um, clippy barrettes. Look at how adorable these are. They're so precious. I don't know if you can see them really well. Maybe my lighting is off, but there's all kinds of just gorgeous shimmery colors in these, and I absolutely love these. Let's just take a look at these little pieces as we pull them out, shall we? And that way we don't get too overwhelmed with having piles of stuff because she sent me a lot of great things. Look at this cute pendant. This pendant is so pretty. It has the, the aqua, the gold. Um, the other side looks like this, so the other side is like a finished side, and it looks just amazing. And you know what I love? And I, I think I've said to you guys before, what I love about these large pendant pieces is that they're made of polymer clay. So they are handcrafted by an amazing artist, not to mention they're lightweight. So you don't have to be afraid to add this to something chunky and fun. And um, you don't have to be worried that it's going to weigh a necklace down. And you can still do other things with it too to make it um, a big standout piece. So very good job, Beth, thank you. And then we have this one, which really caught my eye too. This one is really, really cute. 
So she used some really pretty brown sparkly uh, background here and it has these little tiny raised flowers and a nice really beautiful leaf. I mean this takes time to do this. Look at this flower. When, and she put a little cute little rhinestone in the middle there. Just really, really cute. And it, it is drilled up here at the top so you can attach like a jump ring or a bale and make this your really cute star of the show pendant. So we'll go ahead and put that. We're gonna put these aside as we go through them. And then she loves doing these too, I think. They're so cute, these Zuni Bear cuffs. And these are so great. I mean, all you really need, and honestly, like um, one of those finished um, bracelet, you know, you can pull both sides. I, uh, I know that Bargain Beadbox or Beadbox Bargains has sold them in the past, or maybe just some leather and you have an instant cuff bracelet. Like, look at how cute this is. These little Zuni bears. And I love the swirl pattern on this little guy. He is just adorable. So that is something fun and, you know, be quick and easy to do to um, make a really fun little bracelet that's very different than anybody else's. Okay, and now we have this giant bag. Look at this. This is just chocked full. And she made all kinds of different little things here for me and just sent so many little goodies. We have this adorable flower. Look at this beautiful pendant. And she even put a bale on it for me. And it has, this, these little rhinestones have the colors of what is on here, you know, put right on there as well. And the back is nice and finished too. So she does like a really nice job making sure some of these pieces have like such a nice finished back. And then we have some cute little flowers. We got a bunch of these cute little flowers. These are all so cute and they do have a little hole drilled in them. So you can make them into a fun little pair of earrings or use them as charms. But I have six of them and they're really cute. The, the colors are just so much fun. They're just a ton of fun. So we have those. I think I hear a cat wanting in. Here's a really precious donut. I love this donut and I think I might want to use this. It has a little heart inside. There's little raised flowers on top of it. Let me let that cat in so it's drive me crazy. Come on, Lucy. Come on, you come in. It sounded like it was Cheeto knocking at the door, but it was Lucy knocking at the door. So we'll go ahead and move all these to the side. It's so cute. Oh, and here's another donut. This is really fun. It has like a nice like splatter design to it. Really modern, really unique. She uses a lot of sparkle in there. So there's a lot of beautiful sparkle. So that's really cute too. Oh, and here's some of my favorite things too. I love these hearts that she makes. These hearts are so cute and I have used one in a design before. And this one has a little raised flower sitting right on top and it's very springy, very fun. And then she's kind enough to like hook some of these things together so that we know like, you know, these can go together or they're very much alike. I think these would be cute as like little charms or as even little earrings. I like that they'd be different from each other. It really offers like a lot of interest to a, a really fun pair of earrings where maybe all the other beads that you use are going to be exactly the same, but then the big piece of the earring is just a little bit different than the other. And I think that's a really fun thing to do. Now here's something cool. So this one is drilled here and here. And this is really fun. This is a really cool pendant. This would, I can imagine this either just on some dainty chain going on both sides here, or even with um, some cording, some, you know, one of these bright color cordings and maybe some really bright fun beads along with it. So that's really, really pretty. It kind of reminds me of a guitar pick in a way. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like groovy and rock and roll and all that stuff. So. It's really, really cool. And these always remind me of those um, 
those stones that you cut. Come on, you got someone's going to put it in the comments. Go ahead, somebody put it in the comments. Make my day a lot easier. You know what I'm talking about when you cut it and it has all those like crystals and anyway, someone will tell me or I'll think of it later, one of the two. Here's another really fun one. This one has all kinds of really fun stripes and I love these donuts, you guys, because they're so versatile. You can do so much with them. They're so cool. And it has a cute little flower right here on the side. I love it when she does that. It really just personalizes it so much. These I always think of as like little surfboards. They're so cute. They are, you know, cute little dangles. These can be used as pendants too, or even as a pair of earrings as well. And she made sure she included a cute little shell on there to make them super beachy and fun. Again, these remind me of surfboards, so immediately I think of the beach anyway when I look at them. And then with that little shell on them, it just really ties that beach feel in with it. This one's really cool. This one's a lot skinnier of like a, a donut type pendant. And again, it has that really cool pattern here. And then these, this black with the little silver like sparkles, like the little dots in it, just makes that really cool. And I can see this definitely like on um, a chain with some black and then taking one of these like bright colors out and putting it with the black. Um, I actually have some gunmetal chain that this would look really cool with. Okay, and then here's another great one, this heart that is kind of, that's drilled on this side. I love that off-center drill on these big giant hearts like this. This heart is so pretty. I mean, it has so much pink and purple in it and even some like this deeper greenish turquoise, more of a green teal versus a blue teal and just so much sparkle, so much sparkle in there. Gorgeous. Oh man. Look at this one, you guys. This one is the beach at sunset. Look at this. Look, you have all your little sea creatures here, the water, and look at this. It's like the sun is either rising or setting and you're getting that orange and pink swirls in the sky. That is gorgeous, Beth. Oh my gosh. Wow. You guys, this one is beautiful. I mean, they're all beautiful, but you know what I'm saying. Like, that is just amazing. Okay, so this one, she made like a really big bead. This one is so cool. Let me grab a head, an eye pin or something real quick. It might not be drilled all the way through, or maybe it just needs to be... Oh, there it goes. Just got to push out some of that extra clay that gets in there. All right, so here is this really cool bead that she made. So this would be really fun to make something, a big statement, or even to have as like the top part of a bracelet. Look at this. How neat is that? And this reminds me of the ocean too. It has like, it looks like a wave. And I, this would be really fun to do like a bracelet with, you know, maybe like asymmetrical where you have like, you know how I like to do all the little clusters on one side and then maybe just one strand on the other side of really pretty beads. And there's so much gray and silver and this mint. And this mint color is so much fun to play with. It's one of my favorite colors that I don't use as often as I should. I have like an entire drawer full of mint green, all shades. So this is definitely gonna be something fun. You guys are gonna see some great pieces come out of this that I'm gonna be doing, and it, it's just gonna be a blast. It's the first time I ever got a bead from her. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, so here's, oh, this is cute. It's like a little lattice work, like basket weaving. This is really fun. You could do so much with this too. And this reminds me of Easter in a way because it's woven like a little basket or very spring, like a garden with that lattice work around it. Oh, that's really cute. I love that. Oh my goodness, look at this one. Wow. Check that out. Look at the shimmer. Oh my gosh. And it is the off-center drill, which I really love. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. You guys, Beth has outdone herself. I mean, there, there's so much more in here. 
Okay, here's another heart that she put a bale on for me. Look at the black and the turquoise and the mint in this, and it's just beautiful. And thank you for the bale. That's really cool. Thank you for doing that. And the back is like that too, just really pretty, really cool. Oh, and here we have a really cute cross. This cross is so pretty and she made it beachy with a little shell in the middle. I really like that, that is so pretty. And the pastels in here were just a little bit darker um, coloring too, it's just so beautiful. Here's a, another um, couple of my like surfboard shape type things. This one, she did like a donut shape, which I think is really neat. You can hang it either way. I think that's really cool. And then this one, I call it, I know it's not called the surfboard, but I think of them as surfboards. This one's got a really cute little shell on there. So again, something really fun and beachy. Oh, this one's pretty. This one looks, oh, look at this one. It has some purple in it, some gold. There's a lot of gold in here, some white. There's so many op opportunities with these pendants and pieces that she makes. You can stand in your, where you keep your stash and open your drawers in your little boxes and just find so many great things in your own stash to go with some of these items. This stuff is so great. I can't, I can't even believe it. Like I still have a ton more to go, you guys. All right, and here's another one. Again, using those same colors. These are very similar. Um, really, really cool. So you can make, you know, maybe a couple, you know, different different uh, pieces using the same pendant, maybe using some cording for one and maybe using chain for another or beading for the other one. Here's some cute little minis and I love these. These would also make a great little pair of earrings. I think they're so cute. So, so adorable. Oh, and then look, now we have two little two little hearts that we can make um, earrings out of and they both have that off-center drill. So cute. Look at, this would be so cute. You guys, that's adorable. Tell me that's not so cute. Okay. And then she made another beautiful cross. This one is so pretty. It has some more vivid colors on it. Absolutely gorgeous, drilled at the top there. Just really pretty. And you know what's great about these two is you can make them into your own too. You can, if you have rhinestones and stuff that you wanna decorate, you know, put rhinestones on these, you absolutely can. And it, it's so cool. You just need some of your glue and just put it on there however you want and you can jazz them up too. And then here's a couple little flowers that you can make as earrings as well or as little charms. They're drilled here at the top and they have a cute little pearl right in the middle of them. So adorable. I love all these fun colors and these are just in time for spring and summer, you guys. So amazing. All right, then we have some little birdies and these are like your little nature birds. They have so many cute little colors. They're just really adorable. I swear I see these little birds at my bird feeder daily. Really cute. So if you wanted to do something really fun in nature, you could. Um, they are not drilled as I can see, which is good, which is fine, because you can even put these on something else that you want to, you know, maybe you have like a big flat pendant or, you know, something like, um, like a birdcage type pendant that you just want to stick this little guy too, you definitely could. Really cute little birds. Those are adorable. Okay, so this is really neat. It's like a little trinket tray. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, I love trinket trays. That's one thing I love so much. You know, that you can just put your little rings in or your earrings in. Um, I have one in my bathroom, I have one on my nightstand, and now I think I'll put this one on my kitchen windowsill. So when I get ready to do dishes or cook, I can take my, my rings off and set it right in there instead of running them to the bathroom and putting them in the tray or sitting them on the windowsill waiting for them to get knocked off. And we're getting close to the end here, you guys. She really loaded us up. There's a lot here. Beth, uh, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Okay, these are fun. 
These are super fun. So it looks like you have like a little set here. So you have your earrings, which are really cool and they're kind they're mirrored so that the long, you can do the long on the outside or if you like, if you like this side, you can do that. But I think the shiny side should be up. So, and then you also have a pendant that goes with it too. So you can make a really fun set. That is so cute. Okay, so the next pieces I'm super intrigued by. Like I said, I opened it up Friday, but I didn't get a chance to take a real good look at them. Oh, wow. I just need to scoot everything aside for a second. This is amazing. So these, look at these. I don't know if you can see them really well. These are so cool. And I don't see any holes drilled in them which is absolutely fine because if you have something that you can drill a hole in with it, you can do that. Otherwise, these would be great glued onto like another piece, but I have three different sizes. I have some really large ones, and I also have two medium and two small. These are amazing. Look at the pattern and the colors. There's like a copper with it and all that purple and black. It's just beautiful. And I love the little squiggly shape of these. Look at how cute the other sizes are too. These are gorgeous. Beth, oh my goodness. You like totally outdid yourself. This is, this is unreal. I really thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to make something right now and I have no idea what I want to make first. So I'm gonna give myself a minute to breathe. I'm going to look over all the pieces and then we're going to come back and we're going to make something fun. Beth, thank you. Thank you so much. This is overwhelming and everything is just gorgeous. Thank you. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay, everyone. This one is going to be the star of today's show. I absolutely love this guy. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And we are going to make a very fun beachy um, these beautiful teal colors and I found some beads so these I'm not sure where I got these from um, I really can't remember it's been a long time they've just been in my stash just waiting for the perfect project and I think it would go really well with this I got these from um, bead box bargains I believe last summer and I haven't used them yet and I think with having that little bit of that darker green in there it's going to just give it um, a nice little accent I grabbed some chunky textured chain from my stash um, I've also had this chain for quite a while I have um, quite a bit of it actually and I don't remember where I got it because it's been so long it was before I was really trying to keep track these cute little check glass melons, six millimeter check glass melons, came from Beadbox Bargains and they have like the little bit of silver on them. I think they'd be perfect. I bought two packs when I saw them. I believe they must have been on like a really good sale or something. So I bought two of them because I'm like, oh, I'll use those one day and um, now's the time. Now's time to use them. And then I got, it was two strands of these on here. I got them at Hobby Lobby um, back in like February when they were doing their sale. And they're so sparkly and their pinched um, triangular shape is just so unique. I've already used one of the strands, but I think today we're going to use some of this other strand. And um, yeah, we're going to use that. And they're just glass beads. So um, we're going to make a really fun bracelet out of this guy. And he is going, not bracelet, I'm sorry, necklace. He is going to be our center focal. Um, I do want to use some of this chunky chain as well and if I did say bracelet earlier I do apologize I met necklace <laughs> I get my, my my pieces of jewelry mixed up sometimes but I do want to use some pieces of this chunky chain to you know cut it apart and hang it from down here with a couple little um, little charms on it or little dangles from it and I think it would just make it look really fun and cute uh, I even have some shells that I can grab too. It was just like another thought. So you know it always happens where I need to pause this at some point in time because somebody wants in or out. So when that happens, I'll grab them and hopefully we can incorporate them into our dangle and make this truly an ocean wave. And 
Now we're gonna get started. I'll be right back. I'm gonna separate some of these. And while I'm gone, you know what? it will be a perfect opportunity for me to grab some other fun beachy items. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I did find a couple cute little shells and I grabbed some, I have some spacers, flat and round silver spacers. I have some more of these flat like flying saucer type spacers and some bead caps here. And of course, everything I need to make a necklace, some crimp beads, some wire guardians, and I am want to use this little cute simple toggle clasp for it. I also have um, some of my Bielan wire that I'm using, and it is seven strand, and we're using the satin silver. So we're gonna go ahead and pull some of this off, and I'm gonna measure it around my neck and I'll let you know what I'm using. I don't want it to be super duper long, but I want it to be long enough to hang appropriately. So I'm kind of measuring it at like just below my collar, and I'll cut that off, and we will get started. Beth, again, thank you so much. I don't know how I can thank you enough. I only hope that me getting the word out will boost your page. You guys, you need to go fo follow her. And not only is she a great artist, she's also a very kind human being and a very nice friend. Um, so she definitely, you know, would be nice to have in your corner. All right, so 23 inches is what I'm gonna be, was what I cut. If we use a whole 23 inches, I don't know, we shall see. But let's go ahead and make our fun little necklace. I do have some head pins and eye pins um, sitting here waiting for me. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to grab one of these eye pins. Oh, that's a head pin. Got mixed up in my eye pins, how lucky is that? All right. All right, so here's an eye pin. And we're going to go ahead and just put that right through here, just like so. And we're going to do a um, simple loop. So I'm just gonna bend that over and I plan on trying to do a piece um, from, uh, from Beth, you know, hopefully once a week to show you guys some of the great things that she just sent me more of like in a design element. Oh, I must cut that again. And um, that way you guys can really see some really great things. It'll also give you a chance to, you know, experiment with color with me and let's see what we can figure out together as far as like colors. And um, I definitely would take you know, anyone's feedback on what colors that they, that you think that you would have maybe used in the situation and what accent colors and such. All right, so we have that. And if you guys hear my dog going wild, I am so sorry. There's probably somebody walking through the neighborhood. And if you guys know, my dog thinks that he owns the place. So, but a dog's gonna do what a dog's gonna do, right? They're gonna bark. So I'm just gonna cut this chain up into like little links and I really wanted to use this like bigger, thicker textured chain um, just to make it more fun and give it some more texture. This is always also going to be a very textured piece to begin with, but I love texture. So here we go. We've got a few pieces of this chunky chain and we're going to go ahead and make our pendant first so that when we get ready to string it, it's ready to roll and our pendant is done. So I'm gonna grab some head pins and just set them out here. And I'm gonna grab some of these guys too. Our, we need one of these to join all of that together. I need some smaller ones and some medium ones. I need to be able to use some on our little seashells which I think we will dangle at the bottom of those um, chains. And it's nice because the seashells are pre-drilled, so I, I don't know if I'm gonna use the, the jump ring or if I should do, I think I'll do one of these numbers. Maybe. I think I actually might like 
get some of that out of here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Do I have it in a good spot? I know I shouldn't be asking you because it's not like you can answer me. I'm kind of taking a peek and it looks like I'm in a pretty good spot here. So let's go ahead and open one of these and let's see if this will work in here. If not, we'll go back to using the head pin and um, we'll make it work one way or the other. Oh yeah, that works, good. I, you know what, good, because I like that. All right, where are my other players? I had everything ready and then I moved some stuff and now I have it all pushed aside. Okay. Oh, might as well go ahead and hang it. There we go. Oh yeah, that's gonna be cute hanging from there. And then we'll hang some other little beads and stuff too. So let me open this up. Of those and I love these little this little swirl on these these are so pretty look at how cute these are let's grab a few of these out and their little swirl pattern matches like the swirl in the um, in the necklace here too so it's really cool and of course we have some of these little little guys here. All right, so let's figure out what we want to do exactly. So this is going to be one of those like design in the moment, you guys, because I, I just really got a chance to really look at everything when I opened it for you guys to look at. And um, yeah, so this is a, truly a design in the moment. And I think we're going to go ahead and do these dangles right onto the chain to not give them like a bunch of extra length by putting a jump ring on them. So we're just going to find a good spot for these. So Tegan came over yesterday and she got over just roughly after dinner time. Um, so her and her, her mom and her dad could go and celebrate her dad's birthday together. And the intention was she was gonna spend the night. So we did some stuff together. She showed me some new little things that she got and her little game that she was playing on her iPad. And, um, and then I told her, I said, hey, have you ever done Shrinky Dinks? And she says, yeah. I said. Well, I found a way we can make our own shrinky dinks and I bought some shrinky dink paper. Do you want to go make some? So she was so excited and she's like, yeah. So we went and spent some time, you know, drawing some really cute pictures and little, little things. And she really had so much fun with it. And then, um, she, you know, after that, it was probably getting kind of late. So I said, well, I'm going to get my pajamas on and she's got her pajamas on too. And I made her a nice little bed on the couch and, I sat in um, my recliner chair near the couch and we just, you know, watched TV together and chit chatted and she had her little iPad and um, it was probably roughly around 10 o'clock and I said, well, I have to get up early so I'm going to go to bed and um, I told her, I, I, I said, I'll leave the bathroom light on and she asked if she could, you know, keep the TV on and I said, absolutely. So she had the TV on and went to bed about 11.30 she was really missing her mom and so she um, wanted to go home. So um, when her mom and dad were done um, doing their celebrating for his birthday, he just turned 40, um, they swung by and picked her up and she went home um, last night. And you know, her mom, my sister-in-law told me, she says, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, no, don't be sorry, it's fine. And you know, I totally get it, when I was her age, I would do the same thing. I'd be so excited to get invited over to a friend's house to spend the night. And then once I everything got quiet and it was time to go to bed, I realized like how bad I missed my mom. 
and I was always worried about not, not being there um, for my mom. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to do to like protect my mom from anything, but I always felt like something bad would happen to her because I wasn't there. And that feeling was so overwhelming as a little girl. And, um, you know, so I would always want to go home. So my mom would have to come get me and she was never mad. I remember that she would never be upset at me for wanting to come home late at night. She always understood. So, um, very thankful for that. But she said that she was the same way when she was younger too. She'd even go to her cousin's house and everything was fine until it got late at night and then she missed her mom and her dad and she wanted to go home. So it's just part of being young. I mean, not all of us are, you know, wanting to spend the night away from our parents. And, um, you know, she never really had a problem before, but, you know, I mean, everything changes in people. And, you know, and so, right, you know, I told her, I said, don't worry about it. I'm like, she can come over anytime. She can stay as late as she want, or she can spend the night or she doesn't have to spend the night. Just, you know, let me know and then I can plan something fun for us to do so she's not bored out of her mind since I don't have any littles at home anymore. Um, so I'm going to try to make some plans to go do something fun with her and maybe just her, me, you know, her and our Aunt Jogi just go do something fun. And uh, yeah. So anyway, so this morning when I got up, I didn't have a little girl sleeping on my couch. I didn't have anyone to make breakfast for. It was just, <laughs> it was just me. So I had me and my cats and we had coffee and I got up and got ready to go to church to meet my mom at church and um, just had a really beautiful morning. So it was, um, it was good. I had a wonderful last night and a beautiful morning. I hope you guys this weekend has been good, you know, productive if you wanted it to be or unproductive if you wanted it to be. Um, I'm just hoping it was what you wanted. Okay, so we got some cute little dangle th things going on here. And I think this like gray and, you know, the, the aquas or the teals, the green, green teal, the blue teal are very underrated when put together. Because when you look at them together like this, you're like, why don't I make everything look like that? <laughs> and like I said, this of course is going to be... Um, I'm opting to put some of them on jump rings just so they'll hang a little bit different. Um, so of course, this is not gonna be the only one I do. I will do more pieces as well going forward and really, you know, showcasing the artistry that Beth has as her talent. She's just, she's really good. And again, I will link all those places that you can go to find her and um and other people just like her you know we all belong to like a ton of facebook groups but you know a lot of them are you know they're not all going to be the same because you know everyone has different different artistic abilities and we all do different things and it's really cool to be able to you know uh, spread your boundary or yeah widen your boundaries and check out what other people have going on you never know you might find another new thing that you want to learn to do. I've always been interested in resin and polymer clay, but I've never taken the time to learn how to do any of it. And I know that I would probably really enjoy it, but this is the thing that I enjoy doing the most is creating like a piece of jewelry. Um, I do have all the stuff I need to make paper beads and I haven't sat down to even try it yet. So I'm hoping to have some time off eventually to where I can take an entire day to sit down and make some paper boho beads and then present them to you guys made and, you know, make something cool out of it. Um, I know Joey, at, um, she showed me how to make them on one of her tutorials. She's got a great tutorial out there that um, shows you how she makes them and she even does some fabric ones. So I thanked her, you know, in the comments. I'm like, thank you so much for doing this because I've been wanting to learn how to make them. And um, they're not as hard as I thought they were going to be. So I do have all the things I need to, you know, cut the paper, how I want to have it cut and, and everything. I even bought some really cool paper, but I just haven't taken the time to sit down and really work on it like I, I should be. 
But like I said, if I can get a few days off in a row, more than just the weekend, then um, uh, it'll be a lot better for me and I'll be able to really do a lot more. All right, so we got a couple more here that we wanna make, do things with here. So let's grab our little seashell. Gotta remember, gotta hang it on there. And doing these all at three different levels of chain is going to make it look really full down here. So it's gonna be really cool looking. Don't know if one of these is too big to do as a dangle. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Oh, come on. Why am I having such a hard time cutting this little piece of plastic? All right, I don't know, let's see. I don't think so. I think that if we team it up with some of these, he is going crazy out there today. I have no idea what is going on. The boys are here, so it's not like, I don't know, maybe one of them could grab it. I don't really know what's going on. All right, so yeah, that's gonna be cute to hang one of these as well. That's that's pretty. I love these, the, the geometric shape of these. Oh, I think that might pop all the way through. Hold on one second here. Yeah. Need something on the bottom. There we go. There, this is gonna be cute. Kind of reminds me of like a little lantern in the way. All right, so now we can go ahead and wire wrap that on to our chain. I think we're gonna hang him kind of central here because he's bigger. And I don't want him totally covering up the shell. I hear one of the boys scurrying around. I can hear food being heated up. Okay, this is gonna be so pretty. Let's use some of these little gray ones. These little gray pinch beads are so cute. I wonder why I got clearance at Hobby Lobby. They're such a pretty pattern. I'm just glad I found um, a little piece of them for two dollars I mean can't go wrong they have kind of fire polish look to it too so you're getting picking up other colors in that gray and it's just really pretty We are going to start seeing some really bright, fun colors coming up for this, this spring and summer. I'm so excited for it and I can't wait for it. I just love all the, the I love the, the change of the seasons and when all the colors change too. So like, you know, you have your, your brights and your pastels and your whites and your um, ivories and everything for like all summer and then the fall you start getting into your golds and your um, browns and your burgundies and your wines and all your jewel tones and I, I love all that too so it's just so great to when 
you know, once you get tired of some colors that you've been working with, it's like, oh, it's time for the season to change. <laughs> and so you just kind of go right along with it and you start adapting and you, you know, start doing stuff in other colors and really embracing that, um, that color change opportunity. Of course, that doesn't mean you can't change colors um, anytime you want and do whatever you want. It's just, I think that we all gravitate towards the same kind of stuff because we're so used to um, the changing of like how our colors for our clothing would be different than in the summer than they would be in the fall and winter. All right, so now we have that one. And let's go ahead and open that up and hang him on too. And then we just have one more little dangle chain to make. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty. Okay. And this one, we're not going to put much on there. We're going to put one of these guys in a shell and that's about it. So glad I had some of this really thick chain, this really textured chain to use. All right, get one of our spacers. Let's get a couple bead caps here. There we go. And one more bead cap. And let's hang this little guy on our little chain and then hang our chain on our little, on our cute um, focal. I, I hope she makes more beads like this because I love that. I love being able to like get some like huge bead like that. Beth, if you hear me, I need more beads like that and I would gladly buy them. <laughs> I'll give you my money. I really would love them. All right, so now we have that little guy done too. And now let's go ahead and hang him on here. And get that all closed up tight. And see what's nice is, again, the polymer clay is so light that you don't have this fear of putting um, heavier stuff with it. I mean, it's, that's pretty chunky. Look at how cute that is. That's adorable. Okay, so we don't need any more of these head pins right now. So we can put those away. And I will leave out a couple of these um, jump rings here because we'll need those for our clasp. But then the rest of these can go and be put right away so they're out of our way. All right. Let's go ahead and get some more of these beads off here and get some piles going. Those beads are just fantastic. All right, let's get some more of these. Okay. All right, and I've got my strand here and we're going to go ahead and put this guy on first because he is our center of our necklace and we need to build around him. So let's start with these. Oh, let's start with a little spacer. Let's do a little silver spacer on either side here just to kind of start it. And then let's do um, some of these pinched beads here because I really like the way they look. They're really pretty. Let's 
do a couple of these in a row on each side. These really offer a lot of texture too. And just a lot of sparkle as well. Okay, awesome. And then from there, let's um, let's go into these uh, these little swirly green ones. Let's do some of those. But in order to do that, I want to make like a nice little stopping point. So let's use one of these flat silver spacers, and let's put on one of our little green swirls. Let's grab a bead cap that we're going to cap that bead like that. And then beat on another one. And then we're going to do the opposite. We're going to cap the bead that's coming up next, like this. Just like so. And then we'll use another spacer. So we're building this necklace in like little chunks here. go. Next. And next. And this one. And another flat spacer. Now let's just do one of these gray melons. And then let's go ahead and do one of these flat, um, like UFO, I call them UFO, I don't know what they are, flat UFO spacers. And one of these really pretty blue twisty beads. Some of these might be a little bit, like they need to be washed or something. And then let's do another one of those little, twi those little UFO beads in between. And another one of these blue ones. And then let's end that with a bead cap. Like so. Really just giving it a lot of different, um, a different look and a lot of different texture. And then I think I want to do more of these little swirly beads, but let's go ahead and do um, another gray melon. On both sides. There we go. And let's get some more of these. I loved these beads, but then I just kind of kept forgetting about them or I just, I couldn't just like, I couldn't figure out where to use them. I know that it, that seems really silly, you know, because they're really quite a, they're an easy color scheme to use. But every time I went to go to try to use them, I'm like, that doesn't go at all. Like, what am I going to do with these beads? I love these beads. And then finally, there it is. Okay, this time we're not going to use any bead caps on them. We're just going to use our little flat spacers. There we go just to try to keep giving it some visual interest. Don't feel like just because you used a bead cap on one little cluster of your beads that you have to do it on all of them, because you don't. You can do whatever you like. Sometimes the more difference you use in between um, your spacers and stuff, I think the more interesting it makes it. I mean, that's just my humble opinion, but um, I just think it gives a little more, um, uh, what's the word? Whimsy, I think, is what I'm looking for. Okay, that's, that's fun. 
And then we're gonna do another melon bead on top of this. Just like so. And then I would really like to do some more of those blue beads. There we go. These blue beads are so nice. And these we're gonna do like the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bead cap on the top like that. And we're gonna continue on, do this side. Whoops. Oh, I think my husband's home. I'm gonna take a, a short break. I'm gonna go say hi to him. Um, and I'll be right back and we'll finish this necklace. Okay, I'm back guys, sorry about that. Um, Shane's had to work all weekend, it was his weekend of work. Um, they're on mandatory overtime right now, which is, you know, a really nice paycheck, but I know he's exhausted and he's tired and he's he's over it and I don't blame him, I would be too. I mean, to be honest with you, I can barely make it through a 40 hour work week some weeks. <laughs> so it's like, I get it. All right, so. I do want to use some more of those cute um, gray uh, pinch beads. So we're going to go ahead and use some of those. And I think we'll probably end up using the rest. So I'm just going to pull those off there. And let's use some of these. I'm always so paranoid that I didn't hit record. And then I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't hit record and I just did all the stuff and there's no video. <laughs> I've just been sitting here talking to myself instead of talking to you guys. Which honestly, from the outside, it just sounds like I'm talking to myself. It sounds like I've made up a bunch of friends and I'm in here having like a little pretend bead party, which I guess essentially that's kind of what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and grab a couple more spacers. There we go. And let's use our last two pinch beads. Yep, we did use the whole strand, which I'm happy about because these are really, really pretty. All right, so we have that. And then I think if we do do one of these guys and let's use a couple of these and we're gonna get ready to end this so let's end it with three of these melon oh. beads that I have so apparently because we live at the um, towards the end of the road and there's a park at the end of our road and it, because it's been halfway decent out today people are out at the park and what he thinks he owns the park, you guys. He, he thinks it's his. So he's out there in the living room, even though we have the curtains closed, he can sense that somebody's at his park. His park, you guys. Somebody is at his park. How dare they? All right, I think we're at the end of our really fun necklace. So this has been quite a treat. And I think that this is gonna be probably one of my favorite pieces and I may have to make a cute pair of little earrings to go along with it later. All right, so now we need our ending pieces. And I'm using a couple um, number two crimp tubes from Beadalon, my favorite crimp tubes. And I have my toggle clasp here that I want to use and a couple of my um, uh, wire guardians. All right. Let's go ahead and do the one side first. Put on that crimp tube. And then wire guardian. And then we can just wrap that right around here. We might not even need those jump rings. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and connect this right on. And I like the big open um, hoops on here. And I, I think these came from Amazon. I had bought like a little variety pack of um, 
toggles and this was one of them that was in it and I bought the variety pack because there was one in there that I absolutely loved and I don't remember which one it was now. I'll have to go back through my orders and see if I can find it because it was so fun to have a bunch of different variety of these um, really cute toggle clasps. All right, let's go ahead and crimp that down. And then crimp it this way. And then we should be able to feed the end of our little tail right through my beads here. And then grab a hold of the side. Whoops, sorry guys, I do it every time. And let gravity do its job. Yep, and we did not need those. And then we can do the same thing over here. And I have a little bit of extra, so I will save that to use in like a tassel later on down the road. I have quite the little collection of these little pieces like this. And then we're just gonna put that right through our tail, right through this crimp tube and through a couple of the beads. Don't need to go too crazy, just at least through one, if I can get it through it. Some of these little check glass beads there, the hole is a little not right, or not, not right, but like kind of skinny. So maybe I won't be able to get two through that one. That's okay. You know what? It's absolutely fine. We don't need to put it through a bead. It was a nice thought. Okay. So we have that one all ready to roll. And just want to make sure we're giving this kind of some breathing room. We're not making it super super tight but tight enough to where it's not going to leave a bunch of exposed wire when you're wearing it um, and go ahead and crimp it down and then crimp it again and you know what i forgot to do i forgot to put this on so we're going to use a jump ring after all but we, we, we will find a smaller jump ring so it actually looks like we you know, it wasn't a an accident. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, you, you watch me do it often. And I know somebody had even said that I was so happy that you went back and fixed missing that bead cap. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a good thing. I actually just caught it because I probably wouldn't have caught it to the end. And I would have been like, really? <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the hard part about watching this after the fact is like you're watching it and if you do see something that someone doesn't catch, you're like, no, <laughs> go back and fix that. All right. Yeah, that's not bad. That's fine. Look, it's going to be just fine. It's not the end of the world, right? All right, good deal. So here is our super sweet pretty teal and green and gray beachy necklace. I am going to go ahead and turn this around, try it on for you guys and see what you think. Um, and again, in the show notes, I will put all the information you need to find Beth and other artists just like her that make these beautiful polymer, polymer clay pieces. All right, I'll write back guys. Okay, wow, look at this. Look at that beauty. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, I'm gonna bring the, the camera in closer to me. Look at that. Look at how pretty that looks. Oh my gosh, Beth. This is perfect. It is absolutely perfect. Thank you so much for making this gorgeous bead. This is so pretty. You guys, I am so happy with this necklace. It's so cute. Oh my goodness. And I don't have anything with all these blues and greens together, which I know is surprising, right? Um, I have a lot of the blues with other colors or the greens with other colors, but not just something with these and the gray and the silver. And it's just so pretty. I mean, this really does say, say take me to the beach, I think. All right all I have for you right now you guys I'm sure there's going to be more great things coming up um I will I think if there's one more thing I want to make with Sam's bead box the rainbow wishes um and there is also more polymer clay while we're waiting to get all of our bead boxes in the mail 
Um, so we will do some more polymer, polymer plate pieces later. I promise you there's going to be some really great things, some really fun things. And um, again, don't forget to check the show notes and I will tell you where you need to go to find Beth and all of these great products. You know, when you find her, send her a message, say, hey, I saw Jody's video. I saw the great stuff you made. Can you tell me how, what I need to do to get some of these pieces? And, you know, let her know what pieces you're looking for. You know, if you're looking for like the, the, the bead, uh, like what I have here or any of the other pieces, you know, definitely let her know. And, um, I will also do, I'll put everything out on a board and do a picture of that along with this. So that way you can maybe even like go in, screenshot, um, a picture and, um, send it to her say, I need that. <laughs> I mean, sometimes that's the easiest way to do it because it's hard to describe things, especially if you only watch the video one time and, you know, I kind of went through the pieces kind of quickly. So um, anyway, and if you do get stuck on a piece and you need me to like send you a photo of what I, of, of the photo that I took so you can just have the photo, let me know. I'd be happy to send it to you. I definitely would be happy to send it to you. Um, otherwise, other than that, have a great rest of your day. I am going to go do some cuddling up on the couch and um, enjoy the rest of my Sunday before I make dinner and start the week all over again. God, bless, God's blessings to you all. And I appreciate you all. And I love you all very much. And I hope you have a wonderful week and I will be talking to you soon. Bye.